Hey, what's going on? I wasn't going to do this, but I figured I might as well, since I'm on a roll. It's about Professor Griff. Is this guy real or is he an agent? Well, you can kind of figure it out for yourself. He's been talking about the Illuminati, uh, what artists have to do to get put on and, and to blow up and to get in a certain range of money and of fame. Obviously, Public Enemy, they were in a certain range of fame and money. They were on MTV. Now, I'll say this, though. When their first album came out, it was kind of more low-key. And um, that's the Yo Bum Rusty show. It's kind of low-key. Only people who listened to, to, to the hip-hop uh, underground uh, knew about it, really. <clears throat> it didn't get too much play. Except in the hip-hop circles. I think uh, WBLS used to rock uh, My Uzi Ways a ton every now and then. Or what, it could have been Kiss during the daytime. But um, it was low-key. It's most noted for the uh, Public Enemy number one song. Which at the time, you know, I remember Molly Maul used to play the beat. I used to say to myself, damn, that beat didn't sound that hot. But I was listening on a boombox, so I didn't get to hear the full effect at the time. So, uh, <laughs> but then later on, once I found out where the beat came from, I said, oh, man, damn, they ain't even change it up. They just flat out stole the beat. So, you know, that was a strong song. And, you know, just as a side note, uh... Molly Maul, WBLS, he didn't play the music. I mean, he didn't play the lyrics on the uh, song. He just played the beat. So, <laughs> because he, obviously he thought Chuck D, see, Molly Maul is very critical. He, he thought Chuck D was kind of whack. I think even Mr. Magic said that at, on the air, too. He said the beat is hot, but the, 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 the MC is corny. So, that's why when he came out with the Rebel w Without a Pause, that's why they said they played the, mi the, the music. This time they played the lyrics. Just a side note on that. But anyways, <clears throat> it's not about Chuck D. It's about the unknown guy. Uh, <laughs> he's not even the hype man because Flavor Flav was the hype man. He's like fourth on the food chain. Fourth on the depth chart. Chuck D, Flavor Flav, Terminator X, then Professor Griff. So on the second album... With a whole bunch of singles lead up to it. Second album blew up all over MTV. They became mega. Now, he says that everybody else, Will Smith, whoever you can name, they had to bend over to do what they had to do. So, is he saying that somebody in Public Enemy <laughs> had to bend over and take some big D's to get to where they got? Because they blew up. You didn't, I mean, they were all over MTV, which I always thought was weird. I always asked myself, how come white people are interested in uh, black people talking about white people keeping them down? You know, I, I thought that was pretty weird. But at the time, I didn't know all the mechanisms. I knew Def Jam was a strong label, of course. And that's another thing Chuck D said. He said, they can't disable the power of my label. Def Jam tells you who I am. And I remember LL, everybody on Def Jam would always say the power of their label. But I remember LL saying something, I'm cold getting paid because Rick said so. Not Russell, but because Rick said so. And as you know, Rick Rubin is a Jew. And I always say without him, that Def Jam wouldn't have been what it, where it was because he had the Jewish connections to make it happen. And of course, it passed from one Jew to the next. And it's in Jew hands now. But, of course, Def Jam and any other label is not really about nothing anymore. <clears throat> so, Professor Griff, Public Enemy blew up. I think they had about one, maybe two to three albums that had uh, heavy MTV play, Rap City play, radio play. Then, of course, when people start using the same old beats, again, you know, that that's when your career starts to falter, man, because people don't want to hear that. Like on Ray Kwan's latest album, I think it's called The Wild. He uses that uh, 
old school <laughs> beat that has been used so many times. I'm like, ah, boy. I mean, you might as well just make your own shit up. You got to keep using the same beats. But anyways, at the peak of public enemy, enemy's fame, I think it was with the Welcome to the Terror Dome song. And uh, I think that was off the Fear of the Black Planet. I think the single had dropped before the album dropped. But um, that was a strong song. Then you had Professor Griff come out. And say the the little thing about the Jews, which wasn't really all that much, all that crazy, but you know, they made a big thing out of it. Public Enemy dismissed uh, Professor Griff, kind of like the same vein uh, that uh, Farrakhan dismissed Khalid Muhammad. If you recall, Farrakhan said, "I don't disagree with what Khalid said, but I disagree with the tone in which he said it," which of course is double talk. <laughs> I mean, if you agree with the words, what the fuck difference does it make how he said it? I mean, shit, if somebody says, fuck you, or, hey, fuck you, please. What difference does it make? They still said, fuck you. But, of course, that's BS. Farrakhan was ordered to do it by the white man. Just like I'm sure Public Enemy may have been ordered to do it for Griff. Or, I'll hold out and say they may have done it to save their careers. But at the same time, they're supposed to be rebels. So, what difference did it make? But of course, Griff was was not exactly a big time player. I know he'll he'll say because he'll be on here. <laughs> uh, he'll he'll be on here and say you know that he was the spiritual leader. He got uh, the other guys to think this way and all that kind of stuff. I mean, whatever whatever is whatever it is, man. A lot of people helped a lot of people on the way up, but only few were able to get paid out of it. So he made a little name for himself, got kicked out because of that. Now, if you're like me and you follow things closely, you could say that was done to set up his future career. Because not too long after that, Public Enemy, I think they probably had another album or two that got a little bit of attention. Then after that, they kind of went all digital. They, they went digital kind of early. And they actually released a few albums on their website, digital only. And, uh, basically never been really been heard from again, unless you follow them. I guess they still tour or what have you. Chuck D came out with a solo. And, uh, obviously professor Griff made his attempt with Luke records, uh, with the, with the pawns in the game. This is a situation. The, is, the ziggy ziggy e. <laughs> man, man thought he was serious, but uh, <laughs> filmed in the warehouse shit. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, uh he had the back back draft uh, song with that album cover that people have definitely uh, let it be known what it was all about. Uh, he likes to explain himself away from that. So what was he doing to take pictures like that? Now you might say to yourself, hey. He took one picture, but it wasn't with the guy. Then they superimposed the guy on him and all that, or him behind the guy. But whatever the case is, he took a picture with his shirt off. He, I mean, he didn't question that. How come I got to take a picture with my shirt off? And then I'm sure they must have shown him the, the, the cover and say, hey, here you go, Griff. But of course, he didn't disapprove. Now, of course, the labels can uh say okay we're gonna put this shit out anyways but i'm sure if he's so insightful as he claims he would have asked hey man what's the purpose of this album cover but since he had his shirt off i'm inclined to believe that he knew what the purpose was and uh that's why he came out with the album helped his ass along i guess but i, I think the album basically flopped had a few runs on MTV, but it, it, it flopped and the song was too short. The pawns in the game anyway, it's too short to really be a hit like that anyway. So, you know, all that set up this guy. Then, of course, the Internet age comes along. And then this guy is all of a sudden coming out here being a conspiracy theorist, an Illuminati uh, speaker. Because I know he went and he became, before that, he became a uh, bondsman, a bounty hunter. 
you know, I'm not knocking that because you got to do what you got to do. But um, obviously that money wasn't enough. So you got into this conspiracy Illuminati stuff either on his own or they tapped him on the shoulder and said, hey, Griff, let's get this going. We got the cover story for you. Uh, you say that you hate Jews. So or so be it. We got you now. Let's go. So he does his Illuminati thing. You know, the, the usual thing that goes along with that. Lectures, paid lectures, selling books, DVDs, all that kind of stuff. Same routine that goes on over and over and over again. But I have to say, nothing ever gets done. And Professor Griff, he acts like he speaks as if he is going to get something done. Or he's trying to get busy, but all he's doing is talking. But he's doing the Dick Gregory thing. I told you, they got a lot of these guys out here that are ready to be flipped, already flipped, sleeper cells, uh, lying in wait. All this stuff. So, you know, this guy, he's doing what he's doing with this Illuminati stuff. What's the end game? Dick Gregory, all these guys, they tell you about the Illuminati, how it works. What do they want you to do? Because the way he likes to beat it into your head, he acts like it's critical that you have to do something, but he's never telling you what you have to do. <laughs> and he's obviously not going to do anything. So another thing what he does is the, the lend credence to what he's saying to make it seem like he's for real is he does what a lot of these agents uh, do. He claims that people are trying to kill him. People are after him. But yet you have lectures that say, I will be here, buy your tickets here. Okay, you're basically telling an assassin, I'll be here, get me. But people are trying to kill you. Now, I saw the video that he had when he had his house was on fire. Yeah, that was a fire, but we don't know if that was something that somebody caused or his negligence or, you know, insurance fraud, whatever. You know, it could be anything. But I admit uh, starting a house fire is a way that people do try to kill people to make it look like an accident. But. Again, if they wanted to kill him, they would have killed him. But they need these guys to keep talking. Now that Dick Gregory is gone, they definitely need uh, more guys like him talking. Former rappers or, or guys who were trying to rap and didn't make it big. David Banner, Killer Mike, all these guys. <clears throat> Don't be fooled by none of these guys. One minute they're all trying to they're the Killer Mike, and then the next minute they're, they're pro-black. But they get the TV time. That, that's the clue. They get the TV time. How do these people on TV know to contact these people as opposed to contacting Alquan? How do they know that? Somebody has to tip them off. Why would they want to be directed towards these guys? Because they're already agents. That's why. Don't be fooled. Now, Griff had his Zaza Ali situation. Uh... What was the name of that shit? Z Serious Minds Radio, whatever the hell it was. And of course, Serious Minds, of course, the star is Serious. Uh, we already know what that's all about. Eastern Star, worshipping of the sun, the Freemason stuff. And he talks about this Illuminati. They tell you about it because they're a part of the situation. That's why he, anybody you see with the Ankh, the, uh, the Egyptian stuff that's... Now, African stuff, they may dress it in red, black, and green, which, of course, you know, that's some other shit, but it's really all about Freemasonry. Now, people always say, what's wrong with Freemasonry? I always say this. There should be nothing wrong with it, but if you're trying to sneak around and hide and, and all that kind of stuff, then there must be something wrong with it. Because if it was that good, you would just let everybody get down with it. But you must have some other kind of plans going on if if you don't want people to get down with it. I guess the main reason is because if you get down with it, then it's money. But it, again, if you made the offer, I would be willing to bet if they enriched a lot of people and gave them money. I bet you everybody would be down with it, though. But, you know, it is what it is. They do it the way they want to do it. So Griff comes out with this Zaza Ali, a.k.a. Ginger Daniels, who... 
I didn't know for the longest time that she was half white until it was discussed. He 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 was the one discussing it, d- discussing it, and he was defending her, obviously because he was sticking his situation into her. You know, I give it to him, old man. He you know he still gets him some halfway decent looking women. Of course, he prefers them to have be half white. Of course, which is a. Uh, <laughs> You can't, and he's, that's the, I'm gonna get into that too, because he, he says he's pro black, he's helping black people, but he says he's Native American. Okay, if you're Native American, then why are you bothering us? Go bother the Native Americans. Okay? How come you weren't heard of as the first Native American rapper? I mean, come on. So, anyways, he brings out Ali, he defends her. Uh, when people uh, were calling her mulatto, we can't trust the mulatto and all that kind of stuff. Because some people take it real deep. I say you can't trust the mulatto males, though. That has been proven time and time again in my life. I don't know about yours, but in mine, they really don't see themselves as black. Especially if they have blonde hair. And in a sense, I can kind of understand it. But they're not on our side. The women are different. They usually go towards the darker man. And and in that sense, you can better trust them for that reason. But we don't know if that's sexual or, you know, the instincts of, of being black or something. But that's another situation. Uh, I think I made a video about that anyways. <clears throat> so he defends Zaza Ali against everybody who wants to attack her. Doesn't matter if you're half white, you're still black but as we see these guys who defend the mulattoes and defend the creation of the mulattoes their whole mo is they want a white woman or and they'll settle for the mulatto that looks whiter because if you notice griff dropped zaza ali or she dropped him then he went and got another mulatto that looked whiter than zaza ali And, you know, so what's that saying? He didn't get darker. He got whiter. Soleil, you can see that she's mixed. But Zaza, I didn't see it because, you know, she has some thick lips. Shit, she didn't look mixed to me. But then after I found out, I was like, okay, well, now I see some things. I see the Eastern European forehead, uh, the nose when she turns to the side, and, you know, some of the hair sometimes. But for the most part, she looked black. But again, he bought her out, sold her, went to lectures with her, styled, made himself look good. Like, this is what I got. Even though he kept saying we're not in a relationship. People think we're in a relationship. But come on. Everybody knew what the fuck was going on. And you see how he is with Soleil. I'm not even a guy like Professor Griff jumping from one woman to the next. But I know if a woman sticks to me too too close for too long and she looks good, something's going down. So... (laughs) We already knew he was going down there. She was living with them and all that and getting money. Come, we, we, we know the deal, man. Let's stop playing these games. So either she got out of, she got what she got out of Professor Griff and had enough. Or she realized this is an old man. <laughs> I need somebody closer to my age. And, you know, all the guys like him, they can't take that rejection, but he should have known better anyways. But, you know, it is what it is. But that's why they like a lot of broke women because, you know, they figure, well, I got the money. They'll stick to me. They won't have any choice. But see, if you're smart, you get what you can get out of the situation and then build your own because you don't want to be somebody's slave. So after he the breakup with him and Ali, they tried to make it look like it was business. Then he came out totally shit on the woman call her all kinds of names bitches hoes mulattoes thief uh <laughs> whore criminal ex-con snitch i mean he he, he he went off i mean everything you could think of but as long as he was getting some none of those came out before the public anyways so you know after that breakup he quickly moves on to the soleil Genuine's ex, former rapper, so-called rapper. I only remember one song by her. 
one or two songs. One with JT Money, and I think she had one by herself. You know, she only got the attention for her looks. Not to put her down, because I ain't got nothing bad to say about it now, but I'm just saying that from a rapper's point of view, she, you know, it was her looks. She didn't really have any rap skills, but, you know, you don't need any when you're working with she's working with. But she married Jenny Wine, has some kids, and just like a uh, Negro who always wants your woman, once the shit breaks up, they there to get slide on in. You know, he, uh, Said he knew her since she was 15. He was like 20-something, 20 27 or something like that. So he's like, he was protecting her so she can uh, remain a virgin. Who, who appointed you the, the pussy bodyguard? We all know that this happens only when you have eyes on that woman, 15 or not, because you want her. That's why you don't want anybody else messing with her. We men know all this. But see, at that age, 27, messing with a 15-year-old, or even thinking about it, hey, I mean, you should be ashamed of yourself. Now you married the woman. I mean, it is what it is. You know, Genuine had his issues, but that's a different celebrity gossip issue. So now he's in there. He's Mary Soleil. He, he spreads her around, brings her around. He's his new woman. Zaza Ali's been uh, dropped like a bad habit. She's been hooking on with that uh, Dr. Boyce. Trying to, I guess, trying to slide him some. I guess he's working with more money than uh, Professor Griffin. Looks like he's more of a simp. Funny part is, though, I just just a, a side note on that. <laughs> I'm sure Professor Griffin, when he hears this, he'll probably at least get a smile to his face and be happy. But the funny part is, Professor Griffin is about 60 years old, but he looks younger than Dr. Boyce, who's around <laughs> almost 15 years younger than he is. Which is funny. Shit, Dr. Boyce does look old, man. I, I don't know what the fuck he's doing, but he... When he announced his age, I, I swear, man, I thought he was around 60 himself. But damn, surprised that he was around, I think, 47, I think. That's crazy. But anyways... <clears throat> is Griffin agent? Of course he is. Because he he offers no solutions. And he repeats the same thing. And of course, when you go on Alex Jones... Come on. Alex Jones is a white supremacist, an entertainer, and a radio host. That's all he does. Theatrics and craziness. He has a radio voice. That should tip all you off that he was fake to begin with. I mean, he's about broadcasting. Nothing about the truth. He's a wacko. He's an entertainer. And he's a white racist. So... For Professor Griff to go on these shows, that, that shows that he is what he is. And another thing, too. He used to defend Zaza so much that if I you would ask her a simple question like, do you love your mother? Zaza, he would interrupt. But I knew they were going to break up because she was going to get tired of his ass because he would, he would every time she wanted to answer a question for herself, he would butt in. And start answering for her. As if he was trying to make sure that she answered the right way. Or didn't answer at all. That's another sign of an agent. Maybe she didn't know how deep she was getting into with this stuff. But, you know, given her criminal record. Obviously, it's harder to get a job. So, you know, I, I don't like to break off anybody's money or nothing like that. I'm, I'm not into into all that. Some people do that. So I don't mind her getting what she's getting, but if she's, you know, she's true to the game, she needs to answer all questions. If you ask the questions, if you're into this, you better answer all questions. If you can't answer questions, or if you need a radio host to save you, something's up. That's how you got to look at them. Something is up. But... Obviously, he's dealing with Alex Jones, the Dick Gregory's conspiracy theorists. These, all these guys act like they're doing something, taking care of business. Oh, you run it past me. Oh, OK. Professor Griff is on the case. All right. But what the fuck is he doing? Nothing. <laughs> I mean, he's doing nothing. He's worrying about messing with women as much as he is uh, doing this conspiracy stuff. And at his age, you would thought he would have already been set. And that little wedding of his 
looked like some East Indian, uh, Iranian type stuff. It didn't look like any um, African or Native American stuff, wedding ceremony, but you know, it is what it is. But of course, this guy is secretive. He doesn't answer questions. If you ask him a hard question, like I have, he just throws another question back at you. Clear signs of an agent, of course. The other clear sign is he's doing absolutely nothing. Now, you could say some people could be agents or some people could just be hustle hustlers. But since he went on Alex Jones, he's an agent. Dick Gregory, Dick Gregory is on Alex Jones. He's an agent. Any Negro who goes on Alex Jones is an agent. Especially after 2012, I'd say. Because by then, everybody who was down with Alex, Alex Jones should have known that the man was an agent. So, Professor Griff offers no solutions. All he does is lecture. I don't even know if he still does that. Writes his uh, underground books. Like a lot of these uh, hustlers do. You see me come out with a book, it'll be official. Won't be no uh, Kinko's uh, special made and hustle it on my own website, you know. And it will be written by me. So, again... His latest news is his marriage with Soleil. He keeps talking about the same old stuff, you know. But he's doing nothing. And another thing, too. Like, uh, Griff, like a few other guys. I'll say the name. The Irritated Genie. I like the guy, Irritated Genie. But Zaza Ali as well. They all kept talking about Elijah Muhammad and they kept calling him the honorable Elijah Muhammad and Zaza Ali with her name and it gives you the implications that she's a, a follower of the nation of Islam I know Griff was down with them I don't know if he still is but he damn sure doesn't talk like it or, or dress like it and Zaza Ali doesn't either but she fits the bill because she's half white, so she would be a high-ranking member in the Nation of Islam. But they always say, talk about Elijah Muhammad said this, Elijah Muhammad said that. That's deceptive to make it appear as if they're down with him. Sometimes they would critique Farrakhan, at least definitely the irritated genie would. But yet they were all shit on R. Kelly and say that he's a pedophile, but they wouldn't call Elijah Muhammad a pedophile. These things don't compute. Elijah Muhammad was is definitely a pedophile. R. Ke R. Kelly is not a pedophile, according to the justice system. But according to your eyes, <laughs> he he's a pedophile. That is, if that girl was indeed fourteen, which body wise, body type wise, face wise, stature wise, even though people's statures can vary. She appeared to be around that age range, 13, 14 years old. But she also appeared to be experienced in doing what she was doing. Which, of course, if we think the, think back to 13, 14 years old, we know what a lot of us were doing. But anyways, that's the uh, uh, strange thing. They give praises due to Elijah Muhammad to imply that they're part of something bigger than themselves or or to make it appear as if he's some type of black leader which i find pretty odd so these things all add up to agents uh status this is why i listen to people i pay strict attention to what they say and i retain it because some things these flags get raised in my mind when i hear the wrong thing and i never forget it then i say oh, okay these people are on the suspect list so this Elijah Muhammad, the Illuminati stuff, all of that. Then he said, then the other thing Professor Griff does, he gives out his number and he always wants you to call. See, that's another ploy. They get you to call, they log your phone number, 
trace back the, you know, he sends it to the to the, his masters. They make a log of you, trace back to whoever you are. <clears throat> and they say, okay, we got this guy. He's doing this, he's doing that. We might have to go see him, keep an eye on this guy. That's what he does. Here's my number, call me if you have a problem. I make myself uh, available to everybody. Of course the agent has to make himself available to everybody to, to, to reel the people he's going fishing. That's what he's doing. That's why the same thing with Sarnetta. He's like, okay, you want to talk to me? Show your face. Why do you need to show your face to talk to people? If you call somebody on the phone, do you need to show your face? Of course not. But they want to log everybody, uh, you know, and, and, and catalog, catalog them all. This is what they're doing. And then if uh, you disagree with Professor Greer, what does he do? He says, if you have a problem, then come see me. I have hitters out there just waiting to kill for me. All this kind of stuff. You know, tough guy talk. Okay, are you supposed to be uh, an enlightened guy or are you supposed to be a, a gangster? Which one is it, Professor Griff? Why the threats? So when you got to start threatening people, that means you're an agent. And of course, he's not going to do anything. I know he's supposed to have a black belt in karate and all that kind of stuff, but he's a little peewee. So... You know, it is what it is. You know, my man, I got, I, I give it to him though. At his age, he pulls him some women, you know, I, I give it to him. But again, I can pull those women. So, I mean, he ain't really showing me much. Zaza Ali was before me. Zaza Ali, you can bet those panties will be off within an hour. Probably less than that. I think my world record, matter of fact, let me shut up. But, um. It was definitely under an hour, that's for sure, of meeting a woman. So, Griff is an agent. It, you know, they got these other guys waiting in the wings and emerging right now. Because once these guys are rendered ineffective, they need other people to BS you. See, Farrakhan is an agent with a huge responsibility. That's why they couldn't let him go. Because he's committed to the white man's cause. But they had to let Khalid Muhammad go, even though he was a Freemason too. But he was clearly, you know, going beyond what they wanted. So, you know, this is what happens. It's all a game, man. This is why the Dick Gregory's, the Professor Griff's, the David Banner's, all these other Negroes. This is why they're constantly put out before you to keep brainwashing you. This is why they're giving the press the time. It's mass brainwashing. It's the same as when you guys played that uh, game. Uh, I forgot what they call it. But, you know, when you want to play the game on one person in your family or a buddy or whatever, and everybody acts like they can't hear, you know, no, 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 no they're speaking. They act like they make it so that you can't hear so they, they they're just mouthing their words you know that kind of game this is what's going on that's a, you have a group sensation if 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 one person wants to play it in a house full of people it wouldn't work because obviously he would hear everybody else but when everybody plays along then it seems like okay this guy can't hear but because everybody's talking but they're not really saying anything but I'm sure he can hear his footsteps and everything like that. That's where it falls apart. But people have done that. And the same thing where people don't move. Everybody tries to stand still. You know, those kind of games. It's all group ways of trying to brainwash you. You know, you can call it playing tricks or whatever. But the whole goal is to make you believe something that is, that is not take actually real. And this is what they do with the Pan-African stuff. The Elijah Muhammad stuff. The, the anti-R. Kelly stuff anti-Africa Bambada stuff, the anti-anybody who gets the gets the uh, call up for the day and gets ordered to be hated on for for the, the month or what have you. Uh, this is what they do, man. It's, it's all group brainwashing. Even these guys on various blog talk radio shows, they do the same thing. You notice they all have the same agenda, the same topic. No religion... Jesus Christ sucks. Uh, the religion is dumb. 
Black Lives Matter is real. Uh, uh, if you're pro-black, you're dumb. You know, all this kind of stuff, man, because they, they want to keep beating things into your head. If you're uh, a non-black American and you're speaking on behalf of black Americans, you should be praised like God and any black American who's speaking for them. You should be damned. This is what they're doing. Mass brainwashing. They need a whole bunch of people to keep beating the same things into your head. Be it the slave movies, the Negroes who go on TV, cooning, because that's all they're doing. Mass brainwashing. They're not brainwashing only black people. They're brainwashing white people listening as well. And the white people who go on these shows, they're getting brainwashed. They're brainwashing the white people. So Professor Griff, he's an agent. And uh, we don't need guys like him. You know, he got his sole. Uh, you know, why don't you, you know, deal with that for the rest of your life, man, and, and, and leave the black people alone. Matter of fact, Soleil claims to be a Native American too, but neither one of you look alike. You don't look remotely the same, so I, I don't know what kind of Native Americans you people are, but why don't you stick with the Native American tribes and leave the black people alone? All right, now, Professor Griff, I'm talking to you because I know that your monkey ass scours YouTube, listening to what people are saying about you, and you know you've uh, engaged with me before. So, if you got a problem, you can contact me. <laughs> but of course, in person, you wouldn't have a problem. In person, you would get those uh, karate legs of yours and use them to start running. But it is what it is. But you're you're an agent. I I challenge you to refute the facts and answer any kind of question I might ask on one of your live shows. Don't be like Garfield and uh give me the wrong channel and start running. And then when I come back and find the right channel, you don't want to take me. So with that, I'm out.